looking for my little offset spatula, but I cannot find it. Hey everyone, I'm Claire Saffitz. Welcome to my home kitchen. Today I have another recipe for you from What's for Dessert. It's my blueberry buckle with cornflake streusel. It is my riff on the classic combination of corn and blueberries. It's really easy. It's a ton of fruit held together by a little bit of cake and it's my favorite kind of recipe because you can have it for dessert and then again for breakfast the next morning. So it's really easy, fun to make. I'm gonna show you how to put it together. A buckle is a cake that has a lot of fruit in it and it has a streusel topping. This is really appealing to me because like, I love very, very fruit heavy desserts. This recipe is actually inspired by a Martha Stewart recipe for blueberry buckle that my mom has made for many, many years. And it is like a ton of blueberries kind of barely held together by like tender crumbs of cake. So that was the inspiration. But then I wanted to kind of take it in a different direction flavor wise. So I have like cornmeal in the batter, corn flakes in the streusel topping, which is like super crunchy. Everything kind of comes together. My mom always got Martha Stewart Living magazine and I would read it all the time. I watched Martha Bakes. I worshiped the book Martha Stewart Pies and Tarts, which my mom had and would like literally just like read the pages. I love it so much. Martha, I love you. Come on dessert person. So the ingredients are very straightforward. Let me talk about the streusel topping first. I have all-purpose flour, light brown sugar. Then I have a stick of unsalted butter that I cut into pieces and that's room temp. A little bit of kosher salt and cinnamon. Then a cup of cornflakes, which I crushed with my hands. They're just broken up a little bit. For the cake, I have granulated sugar, some buttermilk at room temp, all-purpose flour, two eggs, one and a half teaspoons baking powder, a half teaspoon baking soda, two teaspoons of diamond crystal kosher salt. I'm gonna talk about why third of a cup of coarse ground cornmeal, and then a pound and a half of blueberries. So that's like two 12 ounce packages or four six ounce packages. So a lot of blueberries. I'm using fresh, but all winter long you can use frozen. It works great, I've tested it both ways. Oh, and lemon. Oh, I didn't, and then more butter and lemon zest and some vanilla extract for the cake. Special equipment. The cake is put together just with a hand mixer. So I have my hand mixer with the beaters and then just a couple bowls for putting together the batter. Then. Most importantly, I have a 10 inch springform pan. So anytime you have a streusel topping, you wanna to bake in a springform pan because you don't wanna to have to turn the cake out and then lose a lot of that topping. So go ahead and get one of these. Here I have my ingredients for the streusel topping. I love streusel because it adds such nice like crunchy texture to the top of cakes. It's also a place where a little extra sweetness is really nice, plus the addition of corn flakes adds this kind of like airy crispiness and gives you some corn flavor. So this part is a super simple first step. I'm gonna combine all of my ingredients except for the butter and corn flakes. So that's the salt and cinnamon. Just mix this around. This is one stick of butter, room temp, and I cubed it while it was cold and it's just been coming to room temperature. So this goes in. This part I think is great to do with kids because it's really tactile and you can't mess it up. So I'm just going in with my fingers, coating the butter in that flour and sugar mixture. And then you wanna smash this in. So with streusel, you wanna basically work in the butter fully and you should have a mixture with no dry spots so that holds together really easily when you squeeze it. So you're just gonna kinda of continue to work this until all the flour like comes together and you have no big pieces of butter. So you're gonna get these kind of big wet crumbs. If you see any big bits of butter, just go ahead and smash those in. And it holds together easily when squeezed. So once you've done that, you're going to add in the cornflakes. I don't add in the cornflakes from the very beginning because one, I want them to maintain their texture and two, I don't want them to hydrate too much. So I want them to stay really crunchy on the top of the cake. So those go in once you have formed your streusel. And now it's just like a gentle toss to combine. I'm not really working it. I just want to mix in the cornflakes. And that's the streusel. So now I'm gonna move on to the cake and the first step for that is to prepare the pan. So I have my 10 inch springform pan. I'm gonna brush the bottom and sides of the pan with the butter. So I'm gonna line the bottom with a round of parchment paper. You don't have to line the bottom of a springform pan. I mean, you, it's designed so that you can always get the cake out. But if you wanna slide the whole thing off of the base, then it's helpful to have a little bit of parchment. So I just cut this to the same diameter 
And I'm going to smooth this in the bottom. And the only reason I buttered the bottom is because it gives something for the parchment to stick to. So then I just like to smooth this out and eliminate any air bubbles underneath the parchment. So there's the lined pan and I'm just going to give the parchment a little bit of butter. Don't let nonstick do butter's job, you know, or whatever. The pan's done. I'm going to set it next to the streusel. Now time to put together the cake. In the smaller bowl, I'm going to combine my dry ingredients. I have the all-purpose flour, then my baking powder and baking soda. I have buttermilk in the batter, so there is some acidity to the batter that will react with the baking soda. So usually you get like the lightest cake by a combination of both leaveners, so that goes in. And I'm adding a full two teaspoons of kosher salt. This seems like a lot. To me, it sounds like a lot for a cake recipe, but I made this recipe many times and there was something lacking in the flavor and I couldn't quite figure out what it was. And then I realized that it was like, there was such a high proportion of fruit to cake that you actually need to like over season the cake so that it imparts some seasoning to the fruit itself. And blueberries I found as a fruit, like take a lot of salt. You add some salt to a blueberry filling or blueberry muffins and it really brings out the flavor. And without it, it just tastes kind of bland. So I'm using two teaspoons of diamond crystal kosher salt. If you're using Morton's, then just use one teaspoon. So that's gonna go in. And then I'm also going to add my cornmeal. And the cornmeal, of course, gives corn flavor. It also gives texture. Like I love having little sort of subtle crunch inside the cake as well. This gets whisked together. It's just to break up any lumps. Then in the larger bowl, I'm gonna combine the butter. This is 10 tablespoons at room temp. It's a little cool in here, so it's cool room temp, I would say. The granulated sugar. Now I'm adding some lemon zest. Of course, like lemon and blueberry is great, but lemon zest is sort of another way of like seasoning and bringing out the flavors of the cake with just that brightness. Salt and acid is the key to seasoning your food. Something Harris told me on our like second date. Okay, I think the recipe calls for two teaspoons, so that's gonna be, this is a small lemon, so that's gonna be pretty much the whole thing. So this is an easy cake recipe, but that doesn't mean that there isn't any technique here or anything to explain or delve into. So in the back of the book, I have an essential recipes and techniques section. And one of the techniques is how to cream butter and sugar together because I think it's a step that people rush a little bit and don't do for long enough. So it really goes into like what's happening, why, why it's important. It's like there's no technique too small to really explain and go into because I don't want to assume knowledge that someone doesn't have. There's something for bakers of all levels, but especially for beginners, I think it'll be really friendly and approachable. I'm going to start to cream this together. So one of the things that I note in that section about the technique, when you're creaming together butter and sugar, it's actually best to have your butter be at like a slightly cooler room temp, more like 68 to 70 degrees rather than over 70. Because once it gets over, you know, like the low 70s, it starts to get a little bit shiny and greasy. And that is not going to hold as much air as like a slightly cooler, almost like waxier consistency for the butter. And the point is that you're working air into the mixture. You're like aerating the butter and that is adding leavening to the cake. How long you should cream butter and sugar with a hand mixer depends on the amount of butter you have, the amount of sugar you have, the size of your bowl, the strength of your, of your mixer. So I can't really tell you like how long this will take. But given the temperature of my butter and this mixture, I need to do this for like a solid five minutes or so. And you are looking for a mixture that is super aerated. Like if you pick it up on the end of a spatula, it shouldn't feel like it really weighs anything and is very, very pale. So you could do this in a stand mixer where you could just kind of walk away, let it go with a paddle. But because it's a relatively small amount of batter, it's very, very doable with a hand mixer. Did someone say that how I use a hand mixer stresses them out? Yeah. Why? Ask them. Is this stressful to people at home? Well, this is not, com like this isn't comfortable, this is hard. And like my method with a hand mixer is that it's, it's like, I don't need leverage this way. Like it's a back and forth around the bowl. So I, I push it from here. Okay, I think we're done here.
I don't really want to do this any longer. <laughs> Cal, why, you think it looks not enough? It doesn't look like the picture in the book. What? Yeah, it does. It looks dense. <laughs> you guys. God, the problem is you've learned too much. You're not helping. In retrospect, this bowl is a little too shallow for this. How long has it been? Like half an hour? 45 minutes? Okay, I think we're finally at a place where I feel comfortable moving on. Can you put it over your head? <laughs> you got scared. Did it? Yeah, I did. But I did it, sort of. You did. Time to add the eggs. I'm gonna add the eggs one at a time. These are room temp. And then beat in each one. Whether you're using a hand mixer or a stand mixer, what you need to do is frequently scrape down the sides of the bowl. So that first egg went in. Now the second egg. It's kind of, I thought about this a lot, like it's kind of like making in a weird way a reverse buttercream. It's basically this emulsion of sugar and butter and egg. And so at this stage, I'm gonna to continue to beat it and it's gonna be like really light and creamy. So now this is like very classic butter cake method. We creamed together the butter and sugar, added the eggs. Now we're gonna add our dry and liquid ingredients alternating. And we begin and end with dry. So I'm gonna do about a third of that flour and cornmeal mixture. Just eyeballing. Anytime you're making a cake, as soon as you begin to add the flour, that's when you wanna be very cautious about mixing and you want to mix as little as possible. And that's because you are introducing flour, it's coming into contact with moisture, and it's gonna create gluten. So for the most tender cake, as soon as you're adding flour, you wanna err on the side of less mixing rather than more. So I like to mix just until I see most of the flour disappear. Then I'm gonna add half of my buttermilk. This is also room temperature. Also add vanilla extract. I think it's like two teaspoons. Now especially I'm adding the liquid. There's flour in there. I don't want a tough cake. So I'm gonna mix this just until it's incorporated. Half of my remaining flour, or a third of the total. So I'm mixing on low this whole time. Then the remaining buttermilk. Is it possible to overwork this? You can overwork this, for sure. If you mix a cake a lot, then it's gonna become tough because you, I'm adding that like buttermilk. Often in a cake recipe, there's usually like extra liquid added. And the liquid plus flour equals gluten. The more you work it, the more gluten you develop. And then you get like a chewy cake, not a tender cake. Or a hard cake, not a tender cake. So that was the last bit of flour. And I'm mixing just until it mostly disappears. But I like to do the last bit of mixing by hand. So you can see there's still some flour around the sides of the bowl. Clean off the beaters. I mean, it almost looks like more blueberries than batter. Oh my God, look. Oh my God, this has been really, you guys have really had some good, oh my God. Oh my God, it's the sweetest thing I've ever seen. It almost is like equal parts blueberries and batter. That's what I want. So I'm just using a large flexible spatula and this makes a fairly thick batter. I love baking with blueberries for a few reasons. One, I love the flavor. Two, they're low moisture, so you generally don't have to do anything to blueberries before you add them to a recipe. There's no, I knew that was gonna happen, kitty cat. Third reason I love blueberries is because you don't have to do anything to them. They come like straight out of the package, basically ready to use. So I'm using fresh, but you could very, very easily use frozen. I tested both ways. I'm gonna add my blueberries. So now I wanna fold these in, and I wanna work gently because I don't wanna burst any of the berries. Now keep in mind that if you are doing this with frozen, um, you will likely have, the, the batter will turn purple because there will be some thawing that occurs with the blueberries and some of them will start to have, give off their juices. And so your cake is gonna be like a little purple. It tastes incredible. I really like using the frozen wild blueberries, those little tiny ones, because they have such good flavor. So, you know, just mix it in the best you can. If you're using frozen because it is so much blueberry to cake, 
It can also cause the batter to seize. Basically, you're like kind of freezing the batter because it's coming into contact with the really cold blueberries. That's okay. The whole thing thaws in the oven and will bake up normally. Just if you're making the cake with frozen, just know that it's gonna bake longer than with fresh. About an extra 10 or 15 minutes, but it gives you the times in the book. So this batter looks great. I'm going to smooth it into my prepared pan. It's a very thick batter, so you wanna take care that you're not forming big air pockets as you add it to the pan. What's the benefit to working in batches? By sort of adding it in like dollop, a dollop at a time, I think I'm distributing it more evenly and more assured not to get big air pockets. Oh, Felix. So of course I'm using my offset spatula, the best tool for smoothing cake batter into the pan, bar none. I love seeing the flex of the coarse cornmeal in there. Okay, so that looks great. So the final assembly step is to just sprinkle the streusel evenly over the surface of the batter. Now I'm gonna put this into the oven and it bakes for a very long time. So all, there's all that fruit in there, there's moisture in the fruit. It does take quite a while for this amount of cake to fully bake through. So with fresh berries, this bakes for about an hour and a half to an hour 40. If you're using frozen, it's more like an hour 45 to an hour 55, even closer to two. It's gonna go into the oven, which is at 350. See you in two hours. Yeah, good thing you're <laughs> staying here. Cut. The pot of coffee just finished brewing. We let this cool overnight because it was getting a little late. And so now you can see in the beautiful light of day, the blueberry buckle. It baked really, really evenly. A cake tester insert into the center came out clean and the top got really crispy and crunchy and now I'm gonna unmold it. So this is quite a substantial cake. This makes a lot of servings. So I'm just gonna cut around the sides. You could serve it slightly warm, but I think it's better if you give it like at least two or three hours to cool completely. So I'm gonna pop off that spring form ring. Normally I'm not eating cake in the morning, but this is really such a fruit heavy, kind of lightly sweet cake that it's actually kind of perfect for breakfast. So I'm gonna grab a knife and we're gonna try a slice. So you can hear how crunchy the streusel is. It kind of like settles into a lid for the cake. I love the streusel topping. It's kind of salty, so many blueberries, and just a little bit of fluffy cake. I love this cake, it's so good. Mm. I think actually letting the cake sit overnight helped it to improve in flavor a little bit. The lemon zest kind of mingles with the fruitiness of the blueberries. Blueberries keep it super moist so it's never dry. And then you get this kind of crunchy lid on top. You can enjoy it all year round just by using frozen blueberries. And I keep thinking that it's kind of like a giant blueberry muffin, but it's not. It's, it's definitely cake. I think it's kind of better than a blueberry muffin, but it's something you could enjoy just as easily for dessert as you could then for breakfast the next morning. Would you make it? I would make it. I love blueberries. There you go. I actually think this is a deceptively simple cake. Throw in a ton of blueberries. Streusel you can just do by hand. Exactly the kind of recipe that I wanted to put in what's for dessert. So, so delicious. And also it's like, I feel pretty good after eating it because it's so much fruit. So thank you for watching. Love showing you recipes from what's for dessert. There's lots more to come. And don't forget to like and subscribe.